Hey everybody. I get a lot of questions on my channel about how to determine how much solar you need to do the job that you're trying to do. And there's a lot of good videos on YouTube that explain all of that. But since I'm kind of doing a little bit of a video series here on this Dometic CF50 refrigerator, 12 volt refrigerator, I thought I'd give you guys kind of a quick and dirty explanation of how I'm going to go about determining what I need for solar to power this thing. This refrigerator in my situation is the largest power consumer that I'm going to be having set up in my van. Believe me, I don't know everything that there is to know about solar. I'm definitely not a paid expert or anything like that. This is just the method that I'm using to make this determination based on what I think I happen to know. So anyway, I'm not going for uh, YouTube's best video on this or any awards or anything like that. I'm just going to try to explain what I'm doing and how it's working for me. So as you know, you've seen a couple videos I posted about the refrigerator and how I went about doing a little test to see how much power it's using and if that smaller battery that I have is going to be enough to do what I need it to do. I actually did some more testing last night. In my camper I have a trimetric battery monitor and charge controller set up that has a shunt which basically what the shunt does is it determines how much power is going in and out of the battery and it gives you that information on a uh, on a readout on a monitor so it's kinda nice to have the ability to do that and I used that to come up with some answers as to how much power this refrigerator is consuming again this video isn't for the experts out there I'm sure there's people out there that know a lot more about this than I do this is for the brand new guy that may not have any knowledge in solar power which I just barely have maybe a hair more than no knowledge um, anyway that's my disclaimer so what you're looking at is a is just a quick sheet that I drew up of course at the top Dometic CF50 and then I did uh, this test I did a startup test in the camper the refrigerator was sitting at about 65 degrees and uh, I plugged it in and let it cool down to 38 degrees so during that process when it started up and was starting that cool down process it used about six or seven amps it was kind of varying there and it also was using 65 to 75 watts through that process that took about 30 minutes and during that time period it consumed 3.07 amp hours I know it says amps hours but that's just amp hours to get there uh, to get the uh, refrigerator cooled down to 38 degrees it took three just a little more than three amp hours and then I let it run for 12 hours with no solar power just running strictly off the battery and telling me exactly how much power it consumed for a 12 hour period just maintaining that 38 degrees and I was kinda surprised and impressed I've got the where did I put that info oh, right here I guess for my 12 hour test battery only with no solar it used 13.5 amp hours total for a 12 hour period that was at about I started the test it was 80 degrees where the refrigerator was in the camper and at the end of the test in the morning it was 60 degrees so the temperatures on the outside of the refrigerator are certainly gonna vary your results with this but just so you know where mine my temps were during the test started at 80 ended at 30 degrees and it used 13 and a half amp hours that 13 and a half includes the uh, 3.07 
amp hours it took to get it cooled down. So I guess if it was already cooled down, theoretically it would have used about 10 amp hours to, for that 12 hour night period. Which I was impressed by. So I wrote down here just below that, the two batteries that I'm considering. I have that 85 amp hour smaller battery and then the uh, 105 amp hour a little bit larger group 27 or group might even be a group 31 battery this was a group 24 and I think that might be a group 27 battery and then I just wrote down a couple of little notes on those batteries the 105 amp hour battery you definitely don't want to go below 50 percent and if you do happen to go below 50 percent you don't want to uh, do it very often because it depletes the longevity of your battery so on the left hand side there 52.5 usable amp hours and then 42.5 usable amp hours using that 50 percent rule on each one of those batteries the percentage numbers i have written down there is the percentage that i used through that 12 hour period so on the bigger battery it would have only used 12.85 percent and on the smaller battery it would have used 15.88 percent both very very uh, low numbers and well below the 50 percent rule on usage so either battery is acceptable to run just that refrigerator um, is what I've concluded with this little test I hope that all makes sense to you guys and then down at the very bottom I put a 100 watt panel and a 30 watt panel now the top one the 100 watt panel I happen to know that because I've used that trimetric to measure it generally speaking just mounted flat on my roof overall average wattage that I see out of that panel is about 75 watts and again that varies a lot based on where you're parked direct sunlight, the angle of the sun's hitting the panel, but this is just an average fixed panel laying flat on my roof that's sitting out in the, in the sunlight, direct sunlight with no shade. And then the bottom one, the 30 watt panel, the one I used for my testing, I just guesstimated it based on the other one. I don't know if that's exact numbers, but a 30 watt panel, I think you can expect to see around 22 watts or so average just mounted flat so if you look at these numbers the watts that I used to cool the refrigerator down were the highest watts the 6 or 7 amps and the 65 to 75 watts is what it was using during that cool down period so the the 100 watt panel average 75 watts will basically run that refrigerator during its cool down process just to maintain the temperature, that refrigerator, to maintain 38 degrees, it was using four and a half, four to five amps and 55 to 65 watts. So during the time that the refrigerator is running, if I was to use a 100 watt panel, I would have excess power coming off of that panel that could be used to go back in and charge the battery. Of course, when the refrigerator shuts down after it's reached temperature using that 20% per hour rule, all of the time that the refrigerator was not running, that power would be directly going to replenish the power you've taken out of your battery. That is not possible, none of that's possible with the 30 watt panel. 22 watts of use and it using just to keep maintain 55 to 65 watts you're losing when the refrigerator is running the only time that you could actually be putting power back into the battery is when the refrigerator is the compressor is not running and it's going to be fairly minimal because out of 22 watts I didn't c calculate the amps how many amps that is but it's going to take a lot of hours of direct sunlight in order to replenish the power that you've taken out of that battery for that downtime in the overnight period. 
whereas a 100 watt panel is going to be able to get that done probably half the day. Now I could do more math and calculations to figure out exactly what it's going to take hour wise but I'm not uh, I, I haven't done the work on that with this particular test. So I hope that'll help you guys out uh, with with this testing and these numbers I've determined I'm going to use a 100 watt panel. I could use either battery I think and be okay I may end up using the 105 amp hour because it's just a little bit more power there storage wise because I'm going to run some other th small things off of this battery as well like charging my laptop with a small inverter I mean that's going to take some time and some power but I'll be doing those things during the day when I have direct sunlight on that panel and hopefully be taking an advantage of the excess power that I'm creating with that 100 watt panel. So this just kind of help you determine um, you always want to use as much panel as possible for any given situation. Um, these are just the uh, methods that I'm using to determine what type of power I, I need to add and, and use or as far as panels goes. Now if you don't have that whole trimetric set up and uh, you're trying to work this this method with uh, just an item that that you bought or you're gonna buy or whatever most of the time you can do an internet search and determine from the manufacturer how many watts and how many amps your particular item uses or consumes and a lot of times as well there'll be a sticker on that product or in the manual or the paperwork somewhere that gives you that information so you don't have to worry about going through using a trimetric setup in order to come up with those numbers the beauty of having the trimetric is I was able to use actual numbers that I tested myself but I think the manufacturers information and uh, document documents that come with the product that you're purchasing are definitely sufficient enough for you to make a decision and a determination of how much power you need in order to run it so hopefully this will help you guys out I try not to make too long of a video here by babbling on because I tend to do that um, anyway I'll do what I can to answer questions and uh, certainly if you guys are looking at this and you know uh, more about this than I do which is quite possible don't hesitate to uh, give me some feedback and some comments in the in the comment section because if the new guys looking at this and watching this video and then reads comments down there they might actually be able to learn a whole lot more than what they're getting off of this video and hopefully have the uh, knowledge and the ability to make these determinations for their own setup and their own circumstances based on what equipment you're planning on using or thinking about buying anyway hope you're all doing well out there and we'll have a uh, and hope you have a great day we'll see you on the next one